I still haven't thought of an intro for this channel, but here we are, you know, welcome back to the Laurent Vescoli channel for my second video since restarting this channel. And hopefully this time I'm actually sat in the middle of the screen, unlike last time when I was a slight bit to that side, I think. Whatever it is, hopefully it's better now. The lighting still isn't great because daylight and windows, well, these are the issues that we're facing right here, right now. Let's hope that I can improve that over time. But yeah, of course, last night, Chelsea played against Manchester City in the League Cup final. Yeah, I think we all know that. If you're watching this, I'm assuming you know that. And I think you also know that a certain incident has overshadowed everything that happened in that game. It's probably even overshadowed the fact that Man City actually won the cup. It's definitely overshadowed the fact that we played incredibly well. It's overshadowed the fact that Maritio Sarri proved a lot of things last night, proved a lot of people wrong last night, in my opinion. I think also overshadowed the fact that we arguably deserve to win. You know, I guess that can be debated, but in my opinion, we did deserve to win. But what was that? Obviously, you know, from the title and um, I'm sorry about the title because I don't have the exact answer because the whole incident doesn't make sense. Like there's things that just suggest one thing and then there's other things that suggest a completely different thing. To be honest, a lot of it doesn't really make sense. Of course, you know, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you want to see more, you know, videos on this channel. Leave me your, you know, your thoughts in the comments down below what kind of videos you want to see. I'm happy to listen to suggestions. Obviously, only going to do what I want to do, but, you know, I'm happy to listen to well, suggestions, like I said. Um, but yeah, let's just get into it. Obviously, in, well, two minutes to go in extra time, basically in the 118th minute or whatever it was, Kepa went down. For the second time in the game, clearly stretching, trying to like what felt his hamstring or whatever. Obviously, he missed the mom again with a hamstring problem and was a doubt for the game yesterday, again, with this hamstring problem. We didn't know um, ahead of the game whether Kepa would be fit in time or not. Turns out he was. But then he went down, I think the first time was also in, at some point in extra time, Caballero went over to like warm up and stuff and you know Kepa was treated on the pitch and then you know he just played on again like I said 118th minute of extra time and he went down again stretched again doctors came over or physios whatever came over gave him a little massage and then Caballero went to warm up again and then he got changed and then all of us obviously thought all right Caballero's coming off Kepa can't play anymore but then as soon as that was happening they obviously the camera I, w I watched it on tv obviously um you know, they cut to, to Kepa and, it, well, he was clearly gesturing, don't take me off, I'm fine to play on. That That's what I thought initially anyway. When all of this was happening, he was like, pointing like, go like that and like, you know, just, no, I'm fine. Just let me play on. I'm fine to play. That's what it looked like to me anyway. I'm not sure whether it looked like that to everyone, but it certainly looked like that to me. And um, so that's why I was like, well, what's going on then? Is he fine or is he not? Because surely he's not going to play on if he's not fine. I mean, I don't know how much a hamstring problem hinders a goalkeeper, but he looked fine in the penalty show. I definitely the hamstring problem itself didn't affect him when you let in the one by Aguero that he should have kept out. But still, it was all a bit, you know, of a madness because obviously Sarri then went absolutely mental, threw things around on the on on the on the touchline on the bench and almost ran down the tunnel and then he came back again. Zola was losing his mind. And Kepa was still gesturing, no, don't take me off. And Caballero was getting ready. Caballero was apparently furious. And to be honest, it was just a, an absolute nightmare. An absolute nightmare. But, you know, obviously then coming to after the game, um, Sari spoke in a press conference and was like, yeah, no, it was all just a misunderstanding. I thought he had a cramp. And um, then when I finally realized that he didn't actually have a cramp and was fine to play on, it was all good. And, um, you know, he said that once the doctors told him, it was all calm. And... Um, you know, you can believe that, you cannot believe that. I choose to, for the most part, believe it. Kepa obviously also released a statement basically saying the same thing. Obviously, that is all PR planned by the club and stuff. And, you know, it's it might be true, but it doesn't necessarily have to be just because they, had, they said the exact same things. Now, what, another thing that is interesting to look at is what happened between extra time and the penalty shootout. Now, Rudiger clearly had to calm down Sarri for whatever reason as he was trying to talk to Kepa or whatever he tried to do to Kepa. I don't know. But then, you know, Sarri's story of the press conference saying once the doctors came over to him a few minutes late and explained the story to him, you know, he wasn't angry anymore. He was calm. He understood. And um, that doesn't really make sense because when, when would that have happened? Was that not before the period between extra time and the shootout? A bit strange. A bit strange. I mean, Sarri did say that in his opinion Kepa was right to say, you know, he wants to stay on the pitch because he was fine, you know, to play on. But he also said that he conducted himself in a bad way. Now, the main reason why I believe the whole story that, you know, Sari and Kepa are putting out there and why it was just to do with the injury, the main reason why that just makes total sense to me is if it was always planned that Caballero would come on for the penalty shootout if we still had a remaining substitution. If that was always the plan, Willy Caballero would have been warming up for at least 
10-15 minutes at least you know arguably they would have done it for the entirety of extra time just to get him properly ready for the penalty shootout you don't bring on a goalkeeper for a penalty shootout and have him warm up for a minute and a half you don't do that that is not a thing that happens like <laughs> no just just no and that's why I believe that it wasn't a tactical thing and that it wasn't Kepa just refusing to go off it was just him saying I'm fine I'm not injured please let me play on which does you know make complete sense but you can still get into the whole argument. Why on earth didn't Kepa just run over to the side and then explain to Sari, mate, I'm fine. You know, he was in his box. Sari was on the touchline. That's what, 60, 60, 70 meters, 60, 70 yards difference. Just run over and explain it. Surely that would have made things a lot simpler. Would have saved face for Sari, would have saved face for Kepa, would have saved face for the club. Because, you know, we are looking a bit like mugs, in all honesty. I mean, Sari certainly didn't help himself either with his absolute fury on the sideline like why is he throwing things around why is he running away for a second and then coming back again I mean I know you're angry yeah but there's no point in doing that like that that doesn't make anything better and you know I just don't get it another thing that I find a little bit strange I don't have confirmation on that but I saw on Twitter that basically shortly after all of this happened and when you know Sari was basically preparing Caballero to come on the two doctors were set right behind Sari so um why didn't they intervene when, you know, he was going to bring Caballero on for Kepa if, you know, they knew that he was fine? That, that doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know whether, you know, they are doctors, I know that. I'm not sure whether they were the ones that actually treated him on the pitch because they weren't on the pitch anymore, but were they already back on the bench? I don't know. But these are the things that make it a little bit strange to me, which make the whole story not align, in my opinion. But again, I'll go back to the same point I just made. If Caballero was planned to come on for the penalty shootout for the reason they played against City, they played against Aguero and stuff like that, that he maybe you know has a you know psychological edge over them in a penalty shootout. That if that was always the plan, he would have been warming up for a lot of extra time, and he didn't do that. So that's why I don't believe that it was just a tactical thing that he just wanted um, Caballero in goal for the penalty shootout. I just I just can't can't believe that. But it still made us look horrible. It still made us look horrible. Kepa should have just run over. Sari should not have lost his mind like that. And at the end of the day, you know, if, you know, you say you're not injured, you're fine to play on, you don't just stand there and just refuse to walk over. Like, that's not how Kepa should have acted. I agree that if he's fine and he knows that, you know, um, Sari wouldn't have taken him off if he's not injured, basically. Okay, yes, tell them. Tell them that and then I'm sure they will let you stay on. But don't just stand there and refuse to go over and, you know, just do that over to, to the bench and stuff and shout around like a crazy person. What's the point in doing that? If your number comes up on the board, you go over there. Like, if they don't react to you gesturing, now I'm fine to play on. If they don't react to that and they tell you to come over, to come off, you go over there and try to explain it to your manager. And when he then says, oh, fair enough, makes sense, go back on the pitch, it's all good, then great. And if he still says, oh, no, you gotta you got to come off, then you come off. It's as simple as that. But I do still believe that everything has been blown out of proportion because with... With why I believe that Kepa was injured, you know, I've heard some conspiracy theories that Kepa was wasting time, wasn't actually even injured, and it was all tactical. Again, Caballero would have been warming up. It wouldn't have just been as simple as, you know, Caballero just warms up for a minute and then comes on for the penalty shootout. Would not have happened like that. Either way, though, it just made us look bad. You know, I think Sadi handled it pretty well in the press conference after. Whether he was just defending Kepa to save face or whether he was telling the truth, doesn't really matter. I think he handled it well. He didn't handle it well at all during the game. Um, neither the Kepa, like I say. What I also want to point out is this weird little clip of Kepa that is circling on Twitter and the internet of Kepa winking to the camera, I think, after extra time. I don't have confirmation whether that was after extra time. The video I saw didn't have the time showing anywhere. That could have been after 90 minutes, in theory. I, I don't know. Um, but if it was after extra time, it's a bit weird. Why are you winking to the camera for after all of this happened a minute ago? Like, why are you doing that for? That doesn't make any sense. So again, it's just things that don't make the story align or make the story not align, whatever the English wording is. You know what I'm trying to say. That's why it's all so confusing. There's some things that just seem totally logical. It's all calm and it's fine, like how we are not warming up. But then these other things just, just don't make a lot of sense. Another thing that I do want to mention, though, is the whole situation of Azpilicueta and David Luiz and just no players really doing anything about this. David Luiz, yes, he walked over to Kepa, spoke to him, apparently said to him, well, if your number comes up, basically just respect what the manager's doing and go off. He tells you to come off, you have to come off. And fair enough, David Luiz did that. Could he have done more? Yes. Could he have, well, either basically carried Kepa off the pitch, basically, or, you know, after Kepa told him the situation, I'm not actually injured, that's the only reason why he wants me to come off, I'm fine. 
if Kepa doesn't walk over, for whatever reason, doesn't want to leave his goal just in case play continues for whatever reason, because the ref is a dickhead, I mean, City should have had a man sent off and that didn't happen, so you never know with those refs in England. So David Luiz could have run over and said to Sarri, actually, he's fine. If that's the only reason you want to take him off for, you don't need to take him off. That could have been done. But what really triggered me is Azpilicueta. And I'm not going to make this all about Azpilicueta. You know, Kepa did wrong, Sarri to an extent did wrong with how he lost his mind. Um, but Azpilicueta said after the game, I didn't see the interview, I only saw the quotes. I don't know what happened when asked about the incident with Kepa. He said, I don't know what happened. I was on the other side of the pitch. First of all, that's not necessarily true. He wasn't. Like he was definitely not on the complete other side of the pitch. Everyone knew what was going on. Everyone in the stand, everyone on TV, Pep Guardiola, the City players, even Vincent Company spoke about it as well. Like none of this, <laughs> he can't not know what was going on. And if he did actually didn't know, it's your job to know, mate. It is your job to know. You're the bloody captain. You're meant to know these things. That's your job as the captain. Do you know what I mean? Like that, that just doesn't make any sense in the, in the first place. But if he did know, because I'm assuming he did, because how do, how on earth would he not know what was going on? Why either first of all, why didn't why didn't he why did he say that he didn't know in his interview or whatever he gave? And why didn't he do anything? Okay, it was David Luiz that was over there and spoke to Kepa. Could have done more. But that's why I've always said David Luiz to me is way more of a captain than Aspiliqueta. But again, I don't wanna necessarily make this about Aspiliqueta. It just annoys me that all of this is just taken away from our quality performance yesterday because we were really good. Yes, we lost, and I'm absolutely devastated by the fact that we lost. It would have won Sadi's first major trophy. It would have just given the club a boost and all sorts. It would have been great. But the fact that we played so well against Man City, again, you know, obviously we beat them at the bridge, then we lost 6-0, which, you know, wasn't helped by players just bottling it. You know, Alonso, Barkley, all of them. And then we were 3-0 down within, like, what, less than 20 minutes anyway. 4-0 down within 23 minutes. So then, then you're already, like, screwed. It doesn't matter what you do as the manager. If you're 4-0 down that after, like, that short amount of time and nothing really to do with any tactical approach because the goals were a wonder goal and three individual mistakes, in all honesty, what can you do as a manager? But today proved again. He knows what... Oh, yesterday, sorry proved that he knows what he's doing, that he knows how to set his team up, that he played a bit more defensive, he pressed, he did, we still did some pressing, you know, but we pressed a lot less high up the pitch. We didn't press their centre-backs as much and we didn't press their goalkeeper at all because Sadi said in his press conference as well, they, they can, Edison can just play over that and then we're lacking numbers basically in other areas of the pitch. So we let them have a bit of space there, but our pressing out wide on, on Leroy Sané when he came on, on Sterling or Bernardo Silva was incredible. Pedro and William worked their bloody socks off. But going forward, they both weren't especially great. Particularly, Pedro wasn't great going forward. But defensively, their work was unbelievable. Emerson had a, had a phenomenal game. Aspilicueta, now that he had a little bit of help, was absolutely phenomenal. Didn't let As um, Sterling do anything. Absolutely anything. Quality. David Luiz and Rudiger as well. Jorginho. Ta tackles, you know, passing, pressing. His pressing alongside Kante was remarkable. The way they pressed, again... Not like the centre backs and the goalkeeper, but in on you know towards the middle area of the pitch, absolute quality. And all of this incident is just overshadowing everything, and it's it's very disappointing. It's extremely disappointing. But at the end of the day, I don't see the point like dropping Kepa now or never playing him again. I think he's a young guy. He's what twenty three or whatever. We just signed him. He's the most expensive goalkeeper in the world. He's a young kid. He came from the Basque country to live in England to play in England. Yes, he speaks a little bit of English. But I think you need to let the kid off. Like, I know he didn't conduct himself in the best way at all. But, all right then, what do we do? Do we play Willy Caballero, can't play with the ball at his feet, and we just play a lot worse? What is the point in that? I don't know whether Kepa is now injured because of the hamstring problem that he had towards the end of the game, clearly. Um, I don't know whether he will miss the game against Tottenham. If he does, you know, I don't know. Will he be left out? Will they even tell us that he's injured? I don't know. Will they say that he's injured when he's not and he's actually being dropped and punished? We don't know just yet. But I just... I just don't see the point. Make up, you know, apologise. Chelsea are really trying everything. They, you know, release statements by Kepa. They release statements by Sari. They release statements by um, David Luiz on the situation. It's just, it is a very, very tricky situation. But I really hope that the club, well, not the club, but we can just solve it internally. I don't want this, I don't want everything to be about this now. Because what it should be about is our remarkable performance and, you know, the disappointing defeat. But still that we can take that we can still do good things this season, that we can win the Europa League, that we can still make top four. Yes, United are on a great bit of form. Arsenal also not in a horrible run of form. Tottenham obviously doing well, so beating them on Wednesday would be huge. Whether we will or not, to be honest, I very much doubt it, especially because we played 120 minutes on Sunday and they played on Saturday a normal Premier League game. So I don't see much 
too much hope in it, but I still think we can win the Europa League and I still think we can finish top four. You know, the season is still long. The season is still long. We're only in February. It's still February. Yes, it only runs until the 12th of May, but we still got some good time to go. I think everything is still possible. I think Sadi is the man to take us forward. I don't think, I don't see the point at all in second him. I've said it on the other video that I've recorded on here for various reasons, but I think yesterday showed again why he shouldn't be sacked for a footballing reason as well. But like I said at the time as well, if we do lose to Tottenham, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he was sacked on like Thursday or Friday or whatever. That, it, that would just make sense to me. N not make sense, but I, I can just see it happening, if you will. But yeah, to be honest, I've been rambling for way too long already. You know, make make of the Kepa situation what you will. I don't think there's a right and a wrong answer right now for with everything we know. I don't, like I say, I told you what I believe. I believe that he wasn't injured, Sadi thought he was injured. And then Sadi lost his cool because he was like, why on earth is he injured but refusing to come off? And that obviously infuriated Sadi, clearly. That's what I believe anyway. You're happy to disagree. You're happy to say that, you know, Kepa fucked it up and whatever. Fine. If, you, if that's your opinion, you do you. I don't agree with it, but fair enough. I just don't see the point in now slating Kepa. Again, he's a young guy. He's a young goalkeeper. Big price tag and doing really well so far this season. So let's not scrutinise him. Let's not make things a lot worse for him. Let's not make things worse for the club because... You know, let's support the club. Let's make it better for the club. We are the fans of the club. You know, let's not make the internet outrage even worse because Chelsea fans actually support the outrage. You know, that, that's not going to help anyone. It's not going to help anyone. We're not going to get rid of Kepa Adi Sabalaga. Whether we get the um, transfer ban in the summer, which I very much doubt still, or whether we get it in January after, we can't afford to let go of another goalkeeper. We cannot afford to do such a thing right now. Absolutely not. So, um, you know, we have to make it work. With Sadi, we have to make it work with Kepa. That's it. But yeah, to be honest, that's really it for me. Leave me all of your thoughts and everything that I said down in the comments section below. Like I said, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. It will be massively appreciated. I mean, I would absolutely love to hit a thousand subscribers in the next few days, weeks, whatever. However quickly this is going to grow because to be honest, this has grown a lot more than I expected this week. So yeah, thank you guys for that, of course, if you have subscribed. But yeah, it is up to Chelsea. It is up to onwards. And I'll see you when I see you.